Question 1. A block of mass 3 kg is initially at rest on a smooth horizontal floor. Okay. So that's the mass. 3 kg is the mass. So its weight will be 30 newtons. Okay. A force of 12 newton acting at an angle of 25 degrees above horizontal. Okay. This is 25 degrees and 12 newtons. Okay. Find the distance traveled by the block in the first 5 seconds. So we want to know S. We know time is 5 seconds. U is 0 meters per second. So if we somehow find acceleration, we can find the distance also. Okay, so to find acceleration, we should know what is the effective applied force in this direction which will be 12 cos 25 degrees because this angle is 25 degree with the horizontal here so this becomes cos and there will be 12 sin 25 degrees here since the surface is smooth so this which will be the reaction force plus 12 sin 25 will be of no use here because it's a smooth uh, plane. So uh, there is no force on this direction. There is no resistive force. So we know that F net equal to MA equal to applied force minus resistive force. So M is 3 kilograms. Acceleration we want to know. Applied force is 12 cos 25 because that is the force which is in direction of motion. Motion is expected to be in this direction. And resistive force in opposite direction, but there is nothing like that. Zero. So A becomes 12 cos 25 over 3. 3 and 12 will cancel. 4 cos 25 comes out to be 3.625 meters per second square. So now we know acceleration, we know time, we know u, so we can find displacement, which is distance also in this case. So uh, S equal to ut plus half ad squared. So S equal to 0 plus 0 times any time will be 0. So half uh, 3.625, this is what we got. And t time is 5 seconds. So let's see how it comes out to be. And in three significant figures, it comes out to be 45.3 meters. Let's move on to the next question. A tractor of mass 3,700 kgs is traveling along a straight horizontal road at a constant speed so v is 12 meters per second constant speed this means there is no acceleration okay the total resistance to the motion is the resistive force is 1150 newtons find the power input of the tractor's engine keep in mind power is always produced by the, the system which is applying the force an engine is the one which is applying the force of so power will relate to only applied force. So how to find this applied force? Uh, we can use uh, because it's going in a constant speed. That means the acceleration is zero. That means the force applied is same as force, uh, resistive force. Whenever uh, system is in equilibrium or it is moving at a constant speed force applied is always equal to force resistive force and that's why there is no acceleration it is moving at constant speed all right so force applied will also be 1150 newtons so now we can write power power is 1150 times velocity is 12 and that gives us watts second part the t 
tractor comes to a hill inclined at four degrees to the horizontal. So let's draw it. This is where it is going. The angle of the hill is four degrees and uh, the power output has increased to 25 kilowatts. So earlier it was 13,800, now it is 25,000 watts. We don't use kilo, okay? Kilo is converted to thousand. All right. And the resistant, resistance to the motion is unchanged. It was 1150 newtons, okay? Find the deceleration of the tractor at the instant it begins to climb the hill. So, uh, deceleration means the force downwards will be more than the force upwards. So, first of all, let's find what is applied force. So, we know the power now. So, we know power is force times speed at a specific time. So, when it was coming from back, at this point, the speed was 12 meters per second. And then at that time, let's find what was the applied force because applied force by the engine will remain same. So force will be power divided by speed, which is uh, power is 25,000 divided by uh, speed. But as it is decelerating after climbing the hill, that means the power will still remain the same. Applied force will still remain the same, but the deceleration is happening because of two forces. One force is this resistive force 1150. So let's try it here. 1150 is a force downwards, which is due to maybe air resistance or friction. But there is a natural force, which is because of the weight of uh, the truck. And uh, let's see what was the weight of the truck. Okay, it is 3,700 kg is the mass. So the weight will be 37,000 newtons. So the force which is downwards because of the weight will be the sine component of this 37,000 newtons sine 4 degrees. This will be a force which will cause deceleration. This will be another force that will cause deceleration. And this will be the force which will try to bring it ahead. So F net equal to uh, MA which is equal to applied force minus resistive force. So M is 3700 kilograms. Acceleration, we don't know. And we want to find it because they're saying deceleration, obviously it will be negative. So applied force is 25,000 divided by 12 minus, now there are two resistive forces, so we will add both of them. Uh, one was 37,000 sine four degrees. And second one was 1150 uh, newtons. So uh, we can find acceleration now. So if we want to find acceleration, it will be this whole thing divided by 3700. And let me use my calculator to find that out. And I got, as expected, a negative 0 0.445 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration. If you use the word deceleration, then negative is not needed. It will be 0 0.445 meters per second square. Okay, let's go to the next part of the same question. Find the constant speed of the tractor could maintain on the hill when working at this power. So power is 25 kilo watt at the same power what will be the constant speed so that means in, if it is constant speed so again acceleration is zero no acceleration no deceleration so the applied force has to be equal to the resistive force so applied force will be 25,000 divided by the constant speed you want equal to uh, the resistive forces were 37,000 sine 4 because weight did not change. So this resistive force will remain same. And 1150 is another resistive force which is remain same. So now, so let's exchange the va values of V, the places of V and this part. So uh, V will come to the right side and 25,000 is still where it is. But 
Due to cross multiplication, this whole thing will become the denominator here. 37,000 sine 4 degrees plus 1150. Put this in the calculator and we will get the answer. What I am getting is 6.7 meters per second. Question 3. The roller coaster has a mass of 840 kg. It ride includes the section where the car climbs a straight ramp, length 8 inclined at 30 degrees. Okay, let's do here, 30 degrees. Above the horizontal, yes, it is above the horizontal. Okay, and the car then immediately descends. Ramp 10 meters inclined, 20 degrees below. So this is below horizontal so basically this is also 20 degree alternate angles right this angle and this angle are alternate all right the resistance to the motion acting on the car is 640 newtons so force of resistance is 640 newtons find the total work done against the resistance force this resistance force as the car ascends the ram first ram and descends the second ram okay uh, there is a uh, confusion here that uh, oh, we know that the resistive force is 640 newtons but there is one additional force which will be the uh, this component of x component rather we can call it of the weight of the two uh, in this direction which will add to the resistive resistance but they have clearly said the resistance force okay so we will just include 640 newtons only even though there are two resistive forces while climbing up while coming down there's only one resistive force which is 640 so in both cases we'll just take 640 because they have clearly said resistance force okay so uh, we know that work done by any force is uh, the force itself multiplied by distance uh, that is uh, moved uh, that the object is moved by that force and multiplied by cos theta. Uh, this theta is the angle between the motion, the distance uh, motion and force. So we know the motion is in this direction, force is also applied in this direction, so angle is zero. Similarly, while descending, both are in same direction, so this angle cos theta is zero. And we know cos zero is one. So there is no need to include this. If both of them are in the same direction, just multiply the force 640 and multiply by uh, distance. It is going how much? 8 meters here and uh, how much? 10 meters here. So 8 plus 10, eight, which is uh, 11520 joules or 11.52 kilojoules okay next part the speed of the car at the bottom of the first ramp is 14 meters per second okay 14 meters per second at bottom of this so 30 degrees here use an energy method to find the speed of the car when it reaches at the bottom of the second ramp that means they are not at same level okay let's see Okay, let's do what? Let's find the height of uh, this particular level from the top. Okay, how much is this distance? So we know this is 30 degrees. We know this is 8 meters. So we know sine 30 degrees equal to, uh, let's call it H1. H1 over 8. So H1 becomes 8 sine 30 degrees, which is uh, 4 meters. Yeah. So, uh, 4 meters is the height it gains from here to here, okay? Now, similar thing we'll do for the second one, which was 20 degrees, okay? Let's see what is the height of 20 degrees, this one. So, let's call it H2, the height of this ramp. This was 10 meters and this is 20 degrees. So, H2 divided by 10 is sine 20 degrees. So H2 equal to 10 sine 20 degrees. 
and that comes out to be x2 equal to 3.42 meters. All right, so they are not equal. That means this level is lower, let's call it zero meters height, and this level is little higher than this level, and this height will be 4 minus uh, 3.42. 0 0.58 meters is the height difference between the two uh, uh, two corners of the ramps. Okay, so now let's use the energy method. Energy method says delta K E, which is change in kinetic energy, plus delta P E, change in potential energy, is equal to work done by the applied force minus work done by the resistance. Okay. Delta Ke, change in kinetic energy will be half m mass, okay? Final velocity square minus initial velocity square. This is the difference in kinetic energy. Potential energy plus, it will be ng is common and final height, let's call it h2 because we called it h2 light. So h2 minus h1. It is kinetic energy. This is the difference in potential energy. Equal to there's no applied force in the roller coaster. The the roller coaster goes down by a natural way. It does. It, there's no force which is applied to bring it down. So this is zero. And we knew the resistance work done by the resistance earlier was uh, one one five two zero. Okay. One one five two. 0, 1520 joules. Okay, so now we know almost everything here except for final velocity. Let's substitute everything. Half, mass is 840. Final velocity we want to know, we don't know this, but we know initial velocity was 14 meters per second here at this end. Plus 840 is mass again, G is 10. H2 minus H1, we already found it was 0 0.58 meters. But was it positive or negative? It was lower and went to higher. Yes, it is positive. It gained height. So we will write positive for 0 0.58 equal to minus 11520. Okay, let's keep this on the left side and cancel this and this. So 420 VF squared minus 196 equal to minus 11520 minus 8400 times 0.58. Okay, so 420, we can divide here. 420 and 420 both sides. So that this cancels out. We are left with final velocity squared minus 196 equal to is minus 39.8. 03 okay vf square equal to minus 39.03 plus 196 which will be 156.58 and if i square root this and this final velocity comes out to be 12.5 meters per second that was needed Question 4. A velocity time graph has been given for a particle in a straight line. Uh, it consists of five straight segments. One, two, three, four, and five. The particle starts from rest. They have explained everything about it. Okay. Show that the acceleration of the particle between t equal to 3.5 here and t equal to 6 here is minus 10 meters per second square. So we can see that the graph is going down from here to here and the gradient of a VT graph is acceleration and that's what they are asking us, acceleration. So we'll just find the gradient of this. Let's find what are the coordinates of this point. The coordinates are 3.5 and 10. Here it is 6 and minus 15. So gradient. Normally is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So in this case, it will be v2. Uh, let's take minus 15 as v2. 
So V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. So it will be minus 25 over 2.5, which is minus 10 meters per second square. So we have shown that it is minus 10 meter per second square in this segment. Okay, next part. The acceleration of the particle between t equal to 6 and t equal to 10, okay, is 7.5 meters per second square positive. When t equal to 10, the velocity of the particle is b, find b. Okay, so here it is v meters per second. Find that they are saying. So again, acceleration is v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1. V2, let's say this one is unknown, but V1 is known to us, which is minus 15. T2 is known to us, which is 10, minus T1 is 6, which is equal to 7.5, that's what they're saying, so we have to find V. So V plus 15 equal to 10 minus 6 is 4, and 4 goes and cross multiplies with 7.5, which is 30. So V is 30 minus 15 equal to 15 meters per second, and that makes perfect sense because this is 10. V will be 15. Okay, next question. The particle comes to rest at B. Okay, last one. At T seconds. Given that the total distance traveled with the particle from T0 to T is 100 meters, find the value of T. So as can you see here, this is T and they're saying total distance traveled is 100 meters. So we have to find T. So what we need to do for that? Simply find the area of all these parts and their sum must be equal to 100. So Let's find, let's call this one, this one as area one, this one as area two, and this one as area three. So area one plus area two plus area three must be equal to 100 meters. So this is a trapezium, the first part. Okay, so area one, first part will be, area of the trapezium is half, first parallel line, which is this line, smaller line, from 1.5 to 3.5 is 2, okay, plus the longer line from 0 to this point, okay, so we don't know this. So this is a new challenge to find this point and this point. We know that the T coordinate of this is unknown, but V coordinate is known that it is 0. Can you see? It is as this axis. So we know that V coordinate is zero, but we don't know T coordinate. Again here, we don't know the T coordinate. So let me erase this part and find them first. Okay, erased now. How can I find this coordinate? We know the gradient of this part is minus 10 meter per second square. So the gradient of these two points will be minus 10. So let's do it. 0 minus 10 over something, let's say T1, minus 3.5 should be equal to minus 10, okay? So uh, if we multiply this here, minus 10 equal to minus 10 T1 plus 35, yeah. So minus 10 minus 35, equal to minus 10 t minus 45 equal to minus 10 t so t equal to minus 45 over minus 10 which is 4.5 seconds and that makes perfect sense here this is 4.5 seconds so we can find the area of this particular uh, trapezium now this second one will be from 0 to 4.5, so it becomes 4.5, and height of the trapezium is 10. 
from here to here, it's 10. Done. A1 is complete. For A2, we need to know the gradient of this line and the coordinates of this arrow point. So let me use the same method for that. And we know the gradient of this line is 7.5. So I will use this 0.6 minus 15 and just call it T20. All right. So the gradient is 7.5, which is equal to 0 minus minus 15 over T2 minus 6. Okay. So we can logically use it, but uh, uh, let me do mathematical proper way. 7.5 T2 minus, this will be 45, yeah, minus 45 equal to 15. 7.5 T2 equal to 15 plus 45 will be 60 on this side. Divide by 7.5, divide by 7.5, cancel. And that comes out to be how much? Uh, uh, 8. And that makes sense. It is exactly here 8. All right. So we got the second one also. Let's find A2 area now. A2 is uh, it's a triangle. So triangle's area is half base. Base from 4.5 till 8, which is 3.5. That is base. Height is 15. We'll take positive 15, okay? We'll not take minus 15 because it's a triangle. We want to find the area. Plus A3. Now we know A3 also. It will again a triangle half base from 8 to T. We don't know. So let's call it T minus 8. Okay, but height is known to us. It's 15. We just found out 15. So in this whole equation, only thing we don't know is T and we'll find it let's this will be 6.5 right times 10 65 divided by 2 32.5 all right here uh 2 and this is 7.5 so 3.5 times 7.5 this 2 will also cancel with 15 it will become 7.5 so plus t minus 8 times 7.5 equal to 100 meters so i have copied it here and now cleanly we can do this 32.5 plus 26.25 plus t minus 8 7.5 equal to 100 will be the next step these two will give me 58.25 e plus T minus 8, 7.5 equal to 100. If I take this to the right side, it subtracts. So T minus 8 times 7.5 equal to 100 minus 58.25. And that gives us sorry, this 7 5. So it will be 41.25. So uh, T minus 8 times 7.5 equal to 41.25 divided by 7.5 divided by 7.5 cancel will be 5.5. So T minus 8 equal to 5.5 which is T equal to 8 plus 5.5, 13.5 seconds. Does it make sense? Let's go back to the graph. And yeah, this is 10, 13.5 seconds is perfect answer. In question five, they have given information about a particle which starts from point O in a straight line. This is the velocity equation from zero to five seconds. And this is the equation after five seconds. Find the acceleration of the particle during the first five seconds of the motion. That means this is the equation we'll focus on. And we know that dv over dt is acceleration. So we will differentiate this one, which will be differentiation 1.5 is 0. And 0 0.4 is the differentiation of 0.4t from 0 to 5 seconds. This is the constant acceleration. 
zero point four meters per second square. We don't have to apply any uh, value for the t because there is no t in this. Okay, that's why it is just one mark. Let's go to the next part. Find the total distance traveled by the particle in first ten seconds. Okay, so since this one is a straight line, there is no turning point, so we can find uh, the equation of the displacement in this one and just plug in five seconds. So let's write this one first: v equal to one point five uh, plus zero point forty. I will do it here. V equal to one point five plus zero point forty. So uh, for finding displacement, we integrate with respect to time. So uh, integration of V is displacement. Integration of 1.5 will be 1.5 T and uh, the 0.4 will be T square over two plus C. To find C, we should know what is S at t equal to zero and it is very clear from what they have explained is that when t it is starting from o time is zero s is also zero so let me do it here so s is zero when t is zero so zero equal to 1.5 times zero plus 0 0.4, zero square over two plus C. So everything is zero, C is zero. So we can ignore C and write the equation now. S equal to 1.5 T plus, and we can cancel this also, 0 0.2 T square. This is the equation of displacement. Since there is no turning points, so we can just plug in T equal to five. S5 will be 1.5 times 5 plus 0 0.2, 5 square. All right, uh, 1.5 times 5 is 7.5 meters plus 25 times 2 will be just 5 meters. Total is 12.5 meters in first 5 seconds. From 5 seconds to 10 seconds, it was... 100 over t square minus 0 0.1 is it t also t uh, dt this is what we have to find this will give us the distance we already found the first five seconds this will be the next five seconds all right so let's rewrite this one as uh, this five to 10, 100 t to the power minus 2, minus 0 0.1 t dt. Now it will be easier to differentiate this one. So 100 will be plus 1, so minus 1, right? So 100 t to the power minus 1 over minus 1. This one will be 0 0.1 t square over 2 plus c. Okay, and that is S. All right, now we know that at five, when time was five seconds, the distance was, uh, we already got it, 12.5 meters. That will help us to find C. So 12.5 equal to minus, let's pick it minus 100, five to the power minus one minus 0 0.15 square over 2 plus c all right so this becomes divided by 5 so minus 20 12.5 equal to minus 20 this will be 2.5 yeah 25 multiplied by 0 0.1 2.5 divided by 2 minus 1.5 2 5 plus c so C comes out to be 12.5 plus 20 plus 1.25, which is equal to 32.5, 33.75. That's C. All right. So we want this 
now it will be let's write it simpler from minus 100 over t minus uh, 0.1 divided by 2 will be 0 0.05 t square and c now is known as 33.75 from 5 to 10 okay so in this we will substitute 10 and 5 one by one and i just noticed that 33.75 c was not needed because it will be cancelled ultimately but it's okay we have done it so we will do it 100 over 10 minus 0 0.05 10 square uh, let me write c in place of 33.75 itself okay Next, minus 100 over 5, minus 0 0.05, 5 squared plus C. So because C is in both, 33.75 is in both, so it gets cancelled out. So there was no need to find this, but we did it. It's good. Next, uh, this will be, okay, minus 10. Then this will be 100 times this, minus 5. This will, because of this minus, it will be positive uh, 20. And there's a 25 positive 1.25. So 15 minus 15 plus 25, 6.25. That is the distance from 5 seconds to 10 seconds. And from 0 to 5 seconds, it was 12.5. So total distance traveled by the particle will be 12.5 plus 6.25 is 18.75 meters. So I skipped this one. Number two, find the value of T when particle is instantaneously at rest. Instant means at a certain time it is at rest and we have to find the value of those times. Okay, it's not possible with the linear part. Yeah, velocity cannot be zero. In this one so we'll just find this one where the velocity is zero so let's do zero equal to 100 over t square minus 0 0.1 t so it will be uh, let's take it to the other side 0 0.1 t 0 0.1 t equal to 100 over t square yeah t square will multiply with t and 0 0.1 comes down we can do that in cross multiplication so t cube it becomes t multiplied by t square equal to 100 divided by 0 0.1 which is 1000 and to find time we can cube root both sides so t equal to 10 seconds so at 10 seconds uh, it stops for a moment and that means that is a stationary point it changes its direction okay so we got second part now and third part was already solved earlier in question six there are coplanar forces what does coplanar force means they are a horizontal force like they are apply, being applied on a table they are horizontal forces all of them so gravity is out of question here that's what this means okay so given that f is equal to zero okay g is equal to 75 newtons okay and alpha is 60 degrees so they've given everything 3f is also 0 3 times 0 will be 0 find the magnitude of the direction of the resultant force so let's find the x component forces first for that we have to convert the one which are tilted into uh, components so 50 newtons because there's 60 degrees so it will be uh, 50 cos 60 degrees in this case 75 is already there so they will add up 75 and this will add up this is zero so there is no need to change it into any component there this is also zero so there is no need to change this into any component uh, this is part one maybe in part two that will be needed so we just have to find x component and which is only on the right side towards right side which is 75 plus 50 cos 60. Cos 60 is half, so 25 plus 75 will be 100 Newton to the right. Okay, now this will have a component upwards also, which is 50 sine 60 degrees. 
and there is no other force in this direction so that is the only resultant y component of the resultant will be 50 sine 60 degrees and that too upwards now they're saying magnitude and direction of the resultant force and resultant force of this force and this force let's draw them one by one 100 newtons first okay to the right from the head of it we'll draw the second one which is 50 sine 60 sine 60 is square root 3 over 2 so it becomes 25 square root 3 all right and resultant will be from the tail of the first to the head of the second this is resultant okay magnitude of r will be square root by pythagorean theorem 100 square plus square root 25 square root 3 so 100 square is 10000 plus uh, 3 square root 3 square will complete 3 and this will be 625 so 1875 will be the square of this one we will find this square root and total will be square root 11875 which is almost 109 newton that's the magnitude of resultant now the direction is left direction is always found from the tail of the resultant this angle we have to find and that will be tan inverse uh, 25 square root 3 over 100. Yeah, that's how we'll find angle theta. And that comes out with 23.4 degrees. But we can't leave it like this, 23.4. We have to show that it is 23.4 with respect to this direction, which was x direction, x positive x direction. So we will write uh, 109 newtons resultant is 109 newtons and 23.4 degree uh, counterclockwise, right? Anti clockwise, right? To the x axis, positive x axis, that is. Given instead that G is zero and the forces are in equilibrium, find F and theta. All right, we know that uh, there is no G anymore, only 50 Newton, which was in this direction. It was making alpha to the x-axis. Then there was three F downwards. And there was F, which was making 50 degrees to negative x. So let's write the components now. It will be 50 cos alpha, 50 sine alpha. This will be F cos 50 degrees. 3F is already there, but there will be F sine 50 extra. X direction first. F cos 50 degrees equal to 50 cos alpha. All right, this is the equation. So this is equation one. Second equation will be this. 3F plus F sine 50 equal to 50 sine alpha, which is upwards because it is in equilibrium. So they have to be equal. We could have divided uh, 2 by 1 so that this sine over cos becomes tan, but still alpha would be there. It would not be uh, get get rid of and this f would still be there. So we would still be left with two variables, which is not what we want. Okay, so let's do what? Let's square both of them. Okay, so the 1 after squaring becomes what? f square cos square 50 degrees equal to 50 square which is 2500 cos square alpha this is what it becomes now uh, this will become what 9 f square plus f square sine square 50 plus 
this times this is 6 f square right 6 f square okay sine 50 equal to 2500 sine square alpha and now let's add both both left and right sides so carefully let's write it f square cos square 50 degrees plus 9 f square plus f square sine square 50 degrees plus 6 f square sine 50 degrees equal to 2500 cos square alpha plus 2500 sine square alpha now there is something interesting going to happen what is that look 2500 is common between these two and we are left with cos square and sine square alpha inside a bracket and this is equal to one we know this so we can ignore this now alpha we got rid of Similarly here, f square cos square 50 and f square sin square 50. These cos square 50 and sin square 50, they are adding it will be 1. So we are just left with f square. Then we have 9f square. And then we have, let's put sin 50 now. 6f square times sin 50. Let's see what is sin 50. 0 0.766. And f square plus 9f square will be 10f square. And 6, F, 6 times 0 0.766 will be 4.6 equal to 2500. 14.6 F square equal to 2500. F square will be 2500 over 14.6 square root both sides to get F. So F comes out to be. 13.1 newtons now they said find f and alpha also right let's see yeah alpha and now we can find alpha by putting this in any one of the equations let's use the first one f cos alpha here f cos 50 degree rather equal to 50 cos alpha all right so F is known to us now, it is 13.1 equal to 50 cos alpha, divide both sides by 50. So alpha becomes cos inverse 13.1 cos 50 over 50, which is 80.3 degrees. In question 7, they were given a weight and pulley system. Uh, please read uh, this whole part and then we'll proceed. Okay, in first part, they're saying that theta is 15 degrees. So, what is the acceleration of B? Right? So, because they are connected, it is actually the acceleration of the whole system. Right? So let's see what are the forces which are working on it. We know that F net equal to MA, which is equal to force applied minus force of resistance. M, because we are taking both of them together, so we will take the mass of the both. So 0 0.9 plus 0 0.4 is the mass of uh, both of both the particles and acceleration we want to find out we don't know it but applied force because we want it to move into this direction 2.5 becomes one of the applied forces but there will be second natural force in this direction which will be the uh, this component x component of the weight of b weight of b is how much 9 newtons that is no sorry 4 newtons 
So four is the so this will be four sine twenty five degrees. Okay. Similarly, the resistance force which will be caused by the weight of the A will be nine sine fifteen degrees. Okay. Or uh, is there any uh, friction? No, because they are saying the particles are initially at rest on a smooth plane inclined at theta degree to the uh, horizontal. So applied force will become two point five plus four sine twenty five degrees, and the resisting force will be only nine sine fifteen degrees, and A. We can find A this way. A will be uh, this whole thing, which is two point five plus four sine twenty five degrees minus nine sine fifteen degrees divided by the sum of the masses one point three. A equal to one point four three meters per second square. Okay, next one. For a different value of theta, the plane on which B rests is rough, with a coefficient of friction between the plane and B as 0.8. Okay, so let's do this again. So this one B, which is 0.48, right? So four newtons. Okay, this is. Four sine twenty-five. Okay, and uh, theta is theta. They're asking us to find theta. Okay, the uh, force in this direction will be nine sine theta. Okay, now we will have a resistance also because there is a force of two point five newtons again, but there will be a resist. Force of friction. This one is still smooth, so no friction here. But here there will be a friction. Okay, let's say frictional force here. Okay, uh, the limiting equilibrium is there. That means the forces on all sides are equal. There is no acceleration, no motion. So the one on the right side, which is four sine twenty-five degrees plus two point five. Will be same as one towards the right side, which is nine sine theta plus this force of friction. And mind it, only this plane is uh, rough, not the other one. Okay, so let's find force of friction first, which is mu r. Okay, mu. What is the r? Normal contact force of this will be four uh, cos. Twenty-five. That will be the R. So it will be zero point eight times four cos twenty-five. So we have only theta unknown here. Rest everything will be known to us. Four sine twenty-five degrees plus two point five um, equal to nine sine theta, and now this becomes three point two. Cos 25 degrees. Let's bring this to the left side. So it becomes 4 sine 25 degrees plus 2.5 minus 3.2 cos 25 degrees equal to 9 sine theta. So let's get rid of 9. Divide the whole thing by 9. Gone, and ultimately, what will happen? Theta will be sine inverse of the whole of this. Four sine twenty-five degrees plus two point five minus three point two cos twenty-five degrees. There is no point in doing it part by part. I do it at one go. So we can put this in our calculator, and we'll get theta, which is. Eight point two four two. So let's do two four three significant figures. Eight point two four degrees.